And we are rolling. We are rolling, baby. So, I am day three. No, See? day two. Of? Of the ketogenic <laughs> diet. How's that going for you, honey? It's really good. Yeah, tell me a little bit more. What you been eating? Just bird seed, bird for seed. the most part. <laughs> No, it's, it's been good. After, um, for anyone who might not have um, been around last week, we celebrated your birthday. Yes. And during birthdays, you go crazy. Ice cream cake, pizza, beer. Taco Bell late night. Ta- ooh, ooh. And I took so that good. as a challenge. So I had six hard shell tacos, no, a cheesy you- gordita crunch, <laughs> you didn't. and a taco supreme. <laughs> well, I and were, a chicken I was, and cheese you, quesadilla. No, you didn't. All at one sitting. Baby, because I remember I had a Mexican pizza and I was going to get a soft taco supreme and it was missing. <laughs> I took it as a challenge. It was I good. couldn't leave just one taco behind. <laughs> Dude, it was so good though. And that Carvel cake, the red velvet cake batter. Oh, simple. I was feeding it to you off of a knife. <laughs> <laughs> you know you're winning on your birthday when. Yeah. I actually, that's the, the thing. If you get your, if you're drunk and you're eating like the most tasty food it kind of bums you out because in the moment you're aware of how good it is but you almost don't remember it as much as if you did it sober Sober, the next uh, day i know but we uh but anyway we indulged ourselves for probably four days yeah so thank you everyone too for all the birthday love and all the wishes it was honestly the most magical birthday ever thanks to you as well honey yeah you know we're but it's crazy for a quarantine birthday i've never felt more loved Everyone's just so lovely. I just love everyone's. We have the you. best audience. Yeah. It. We, there. I, I think more than ever, we've always loved our audience and we've felt the love. But I don't know if it's maybe because we're doing longer form conversation yeah. or I don't know what it is. But, but I it feel is deep. I feel it. I love yeah. it. I'm so affected by everyone, and I love that. I. I, I think it's definitely a deeper relationship because. I think before when someone goes, hey, like, I love you, or hey, that's cute, or hey, you're the best, or something like that, right. you're you're like, wow, I feel the love. And I think maybe recently, just because it's the YouTube comments or whatever, yeah. it's it's more, people are, are, are divulging more. So you're actually getting, you know, you're hearing in depth of, of what they like or what's going yeah. on or the community that we're building. But I think three, three, four times a week, we look at each other and we're like... Our this community, community is so because yeah. people are becoming friends. Yeah. And that's I the know. best like we we want to continue to grow this this community where people just can meet each other. Everyone's like-minded because we have this overall positive energy even though we do tackle serious topics. Sure. The overall vibe is how we can still love and love each other, be kind to each other, be positive, get over adversity. And I think that attracts a certain person. Of course. And we're, we're feeling it in the comment section. So just thank you all so much for your love and support. We it's love been It's you. been amazing. Um, but I'll talk more about the keto, but I don't want to wait too long to get into Come my famous opening. In, baby. Welcome, everyone, to the Freddie and Alyssa Show. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe, like, comment, all that fun YouTube stuff. We've been putting up videos now for over two years. We've got vlogs. We have our engagement video. We've done many interviews and podcasts. We do one-off videos. And we've got a lot of exciting things in the pipeline for you. So do some friendly stalking (laughs) and just take that quick second to hit subscribe. It feels so, so good. And while I'm on my opening here, and my God, are we a mask factory? (laughs) I'm almost embarrassed to show how many we have. Let me just show a couple. Um, So we have some cloth cloth face masks for you. For those of you who are watching, we've got a, a gold anchor mask. We've got an hourglass mask. We've got... One of our best sellers here, the Sunflower and the Leopards, another good best seller. But that's, oh, there it is. Alyssa's got it right there. (laughs) So we've got a variety for everyone. And another really good one, too. I love the Pride Mask. I rock this one a lot. The Pride Mask. So for those of you who are wearing masks and staying safe when you're going out and all that good stuff, we've got a comfortable, fun, kind of eclectic. Be uh, safe, but make it fashion. Be safe. While making it fashionable, there you I like go. that one. There you go. Honey. We're working on the slogan still, everyone. But uh, but yeah, we have a link in the description, or you can go to teespring.com forward slash stores forward slash Freddie dash Alyssa, and you can see all of our merch there. Um, and I know a lot of you who've ordered in the past couple of weeks, 
They're print on demand, so it does take about two weeks to get to you, but people are starting, to get, starting to get them. They're starting to get them. And um, so let us know when you get them and what you think. We know we're, we're really happy with them, and they're really cool. So thank you for your support there. And then I also want to give a shout-out to uh, three new producers that we have here on the show. <clears throat> Where is... Now, do you think you're going to be able to pronounce these names today? Today, I'm, I'm in good you're shape. You're feeling real confident? Dewey Gomans. Dewey Gomans, welcome to the producing Woo-hoo. team. Richard Hakim, yeah. welcome to the producing team. And Flavorist, Flavorista with Sharon Leanne yes. from Australia, welcome Woo-hoo. to the producer team. <laughs> we got some worldwide producers. Worldwide producers. Love you guys. Welcome. Yeah. Welcome, welcome. Um, if you want to learn more about being a producer and joining the members only group, we're continuing to expand that portion of our podcast. We have that link in the description box below as well so you can learn about how to become a producer. We do a live stream. We have a live stream coming up. And... Um, we're going to be announcing something really cool for the members uh, in uh, September and for all of you because we are actually, I know this is going to be hard to believe, Uh-oh. after all this time, Uh-oh. we actually are going to launch a rigid release schedule <gasps> starting like the second week of September because we still have kind of a rogue month here, it's definitely with the Days of Our Lives episodes that are rolling out at different days and there's times we can't wait. But in the second week of September, we're going to put out an actual schedule mm-hmm. so that you know every Wednesday, Friday at whatever it's the time we decide, you know, whatever days we're going to, this we're way you can put it in your calendar. We're going to have an actual show schedule, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Who's been telling you we need to do that for a couple of years? We needed to work out the kinks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now we have it's it. Coming, but, friends. But, um, but yeah, thanks for your patience with everything. And, and we will continue to put them out. Just right now, I feel, you know, I can confidently say every Wednesday and Friday mm-hmm. here on out. Uh, you're going to have a, a podcast from us and then we'll lock down the specific time and this way you'll know. And yeah. we can actually build like a routine where people go, oh, good. I have Wednesday, Friday, and then Saturday is the recaps of little clips if you've missed anything. So exactly. we're going to do all that. But back to the keto diet. Um, back to the keto diet. So you've been on it two days now. It is the best recovery diet to do because I, I'll gain – like five pounds in five days. But then if I do keto for three days, it's just like gone. You must store water like no one's all water weight. Because I see you gain gain and lose it so quick. Yeah. It's the most bizarre thing. Well, and it makes it a little frustrating for me though because there's times that we'll all go – like I remember I went 60 days. I go, I'm not going to have any alcohol. Yeah. I went 60 days with working out almost every day. I know. I was eating relatively healthy but still having sweets. Yeah. Lost six pounds in 60 days. It's very rare for you. Which is rare. But then I go on keto for four days and lose four and a half pounds. (laughs) So I was like, so maybe it's just carbs. I don't even think it's alcohol. I think it's carbs. There's something with me and carbs that holds water or something. We've we've done calorie counting before in the past that where we're really rigid about it. And you've lost a lot. The past 60 days when we were kind of eating healthy but still eating what we wanted, we definitely weren't on a strict calorie counting scenario you know like it's it was i don't know we'll see let's see what happens here i just got to find moderation man it's like so (laughs) frustrating to not frustrating in a bad way but it's just exhausting where i'm either on a diet and feeling good about it or i'm eating whatever and drinking beer and enjoying but i got to try to just maybe do once a week and do it that way but then i get so into it like if if i'm five days keto i don't want to break it just for the sake of breaking it then don't so we'll, we'll keep you posted. I took a before <laughs> picture and weighed myself. I'm going to keep that off the air until I can show some results. But um, I mean, it's the heaviest I've ever been. But you don't carry it. I don't know. You carry it kind of well because you have very muscular legs. I mean, no those... one would guess my weight. Everyone no. guesses I'm 20 pounds less than I am. Uh-huh. So I don't know if it's like just muscle over the years or whatever it is. But I'm not like that muscular. But I definitely have your legs are very my muscular. legs and yeah, even my back and shoulders yeah. are pretty broad. So um, anyway, that's my my <laughs> update. Hey, we say we're real and raw the here. The more you know. <laughs> um, but do you want to shift to some exciting news that we've just been couldn't even sleep last night? We were couldn't so excited. Even sleep. So. 
for everyone listening, you guys probably in the past have heard us talk about Florida. It's something that, you know, in the future, we really are thinking of, you know, setting our roots there, eventually having a family. We obviously really want to get married there. And after a lot of research, we've decided we are going to road trip to Florida for a little work staycation. Um, We're going to rent a house for like two months, we're thinking, and um, work, play, go explore the state and the cities and see where we want to get married, see where we're going to want to live eventually. And we're like, there's no better time than now because we literally have nothing holding us back and we don't know when the next time this opportunity will present itself. Like the whole world's kind of on pause a little bit. Yeah. And we're like, like, hey, I know it's a long road trip, (laughs) but we want our car and I don't want to fly. I'm just like not there. Yeah. Because if we if we fly to we were looking at the cost because Benji, he's 150 each way. Um, And then just the risk of flying in general. And then I heard like Delta uh, turn their plane around because a couple people didn't have masks on and stuff. And it's and it's. I just don't want to go to the airport, and then you have to drive to the airport because you don't want to Uber. Ooh. Or you can have a friend bring you, but then you got to wear a mask. It's just all weird. So we yeah. said, what if we just drove? We we looked at the cost of everything. Benji can come. It's easy. And we'll take our time because we want to bring our podcast on the road. Yes. So we figured, I don't think we'll podcast in every city because we're not going to stay there long, but we can vlog, we can document it, yeah. and then we can you know um, just keep you up to date on everything. Because as we were looking for places, we, we probably want to buy – in 2021 sometime you know i I think buying a house and getting married are two huge life decisions and we've decided on florida and we're getting close to dates on like the wedding of locking that down but it's hard to do research and find these places without knowing the city without looking at it in person yeah and so here we are trying to find a date and lock things down but doing it three thousand miles away is difficult so we said why don't we just take a trip We'll rent a place, we can podcast from there, and then we can go search wedding venues, and then we can go and research the areas. Because there's about four cities in Florida Mm -hmm. that we are obsessed with. Because where you grew up in Boca, Coral Springs, Parkland, that whole area, we don't really want to buy there. Uh, It's just going to be cool because we have so many friends there. Yeah. And they'll be two, three hours away no matter where we go. But as we looked at places like Bradenton, we looked at places like Lakewood Ranch, we looked at places like Sarasota, like Venice, like Winter Garden, Winter Springs, um, Davenport's up and coming. So, but we want to look at those places. And see them in person. And then <laughs> talk sure with it's... like a realtor and at least start looking so that in 2021, yep. if we make that move, um, that we'll be able to... And we know, know too, eventually my parents are going to be there, hopefully my sister too. Yeah. We're really trying to get everyone. Um, and so it'll be really great for us to be able to explore and navigate and see where would be a great place ultimately for everyone, um, you know, to live and be together finally. Yeah. Yeah, and, and also too, I just really am looking forward to the adventure. You know, you and I have really, really taken this serious the mm-hmm. quarantine. Mm-hmm. And um, I don't know, when's this coming out? What day is it? I don't even know what day it is. This will, this will be coming out on August 5th. Essentially, in a week from now, it's going to be five months. <laughs> so for five months, Alyssa and I have, have had you know the luxury, I like to call it. I don't like to feel like it's a bad thing because we had the luxury of being able to work from home and not have to go anywhere. Um, groceries get delivered. We walk the dog. Yeah. And that's it. So we haven't gone anywhere in five months. Not one place. Like we stop at that little mini mart where there's like, it's really small. Like we'll do that. But we've canceled everything. So we haven't really gone anywhere. And we've just been in this two bedroom condo. Again, feels like a luxury that we don't have to go out. I know that other people are in a really bad position out there. So I definitely understand how grateful we are to have this. But we also wanted to just have a house for a little bit to go look around and go and have a pool and just be able to go outside. (laughs) Yeah. And not have to put on a mask, just be in our backyard and just get some sunshine and have the dog and have Benji run around yeah. and um, and just do everything that we're doing here, but in a new location and then get some things done while we're there. Of course. And all the while, you know, we're going there for a reason because we really need to scout different cities and different venues and just ultimately where we're going to want to live. So... I don't know. I just, I know we've been thinking about it for a long time. We really have been talking about it for so long. And it's now or never. That's how everything in life is. 
sometimes you just got to bite the bullet and go because we're like, should we really do this? And like right as we were renting the house, we're like, are we doing this? We're like, we're doing it. And I'm so excited. Like I can't sleep at night. I wake up. It's all I think about. And we've mapped out all the cities that we're going to stop in, the best route to get there. Yeah. You know, because we're doing what? We're going to go L.A. to Tucson maybe first. Yeah. Well, because the next thing is uh, here's kind of a little cool inside tip. Uh-oh. When you're a modern day influencer, why is that word dirty? I don't know. It never feels good saying it. I love It's just all rebranding. Like you're, we, we go, um, like there's even people who ask me, uh, what do you do for a living? And I was like, oh, I'm in the entertainment business. Like I'll sometimes stop yeah. it there so that they don't have the, because yet again, being an actor. So what you been in? <laughs> you get, what have you been in? Or you get this where they go, oh, oh you're an actor? Yeah, what, what have you been in? Because they're like uh, 99% yeah. of people, yeah. unfortunately, don't yeah. get anything. So I, I I usually just try to put it off. So I've always, like, what do you do? I work on a soap opera. Oh, what soap opera? Then it goes that way. Yeah. So I kind of do do this. But the same thing with influencing. We like to say content creation or podcasting. And I, I think the umbrella is in is content creation slash influencing. Yeah. But anywho, we're making a video <laughs> on this sometime in the next couple of weeks. I yeah. want to explain everything. Um, I think I've mentioned that before. I can't remember things I tell you or, or, the, or the audience. <laughs> can't keep it straight. But um, when you have a following, the unique thing about traveling is especially hotels and especially in these times. Some hotels will offer you discounts or free stays if you post about their hotel. So they look at it and go, this is a $150 room that will be empty. We could give it to Freddie and Lissa for free, and in exchange, we'll post on our Instagram or Facebook or mention it on the podcast or whatever and share it with 20, 30, 40,000 people, yeah. and that hotel will, will get publicity for nothing, really. But for us, we're like, great, we save money, and the hotel gets free advertising, and yep. we are seeking a really cool place to do that. So our audience gets to see a really cool hotel if they're ever traveling to those places, because we like to do different unique kind of places we're not just going to go to a random hotel like we want to look for like if we're going to tucson what's something in tucson that's unique that we can go and share so that's exciting not just a like even back in holiday and express or something (laughs) even back in 2018 we went to uh, playa del carmen mexico and we were able to score an incredible um collab with i think it was called the carmen hotel yeah. And we got this huge suite, and they were so lovely and so wonderful, but it was so much fun oh to God. show and share everything that was there. And They gave us awesome. even breakfast for free. Yeah. Well, we did pay for the standard room, but they upgraded us to the best room they had, like which was huge like suite. It was a insane. huge suite. So you get little perks like that. And a lot of people, we do this all the time. A lot of people say no. Um, but if you just email like enough anyone. people, you can get it for free. Yeah. So we're, we'll do that for a little bit, and if we can get lucky and get a few, like we'll save a couple hundred bucks, maybe treat ourselves to yeah. some, like a nice dinner. And if we don't hear back, then you guys won't be hearing about the hotel. Yeah. <laughs> we will not tell you where we are at all. We're in this nice hotel that we paid for. How dare these hotels make us pay for their service? We'll see. We'll see. It's hit or miss. You never know with travel, and especially everything going on now. Um We'll, we'll see what happens. So, But the point to that is we are going to throw out um, a couple cities. And like if we hit up five hotels in, in Tucson or five hotels in Scottsdale, my whole someone thing, will say yes. Yeah. My and whole, if they don't, then we'll just pick the best route. Right. But my whole thing too of us getting there is <laughs> we've had this talk. I wanted to make sure that it's enjoyable. I don't want to rush and be like driving for 14 hours and then yeah. not be able to enjoy the hotel. So I think having like one more night, one more stop is going to be worth it for our psyche and, yeah. you know, just not killing each other on the road, babe. <laughs> what do you think about that? I, I, I really like that. No, we have, <laughs> um, I think if, if everything works out, I think we're going to do Tucson, we're going to do Studio City, California to Tucson, Arizona, mm-hmm. Tucson, Arizona to El Paso, Texas. El Paso, Texas to San Antonio, Texas, San Antonio, Texas to New Orleans, New Orleans to our final destination in Florida, which is around Orlando. Yeah. So that's kind of the thing. So we're only going to drive seven and a half hours, then six, then six and a half, then eight, then nine and a half hours. But it's also going to allow us to enjoy it. 
which we're always thinking of all of you too, of, of if we're driving 14 hours, we're not going to want to go to the hotel after 14 hours and, and make a video or to document. You're just kind of tired. Yeah. So we're like, if we can sleep in, have a breakfast, make cool content for all of you who are, who are watching and listening, and we're going to be able to get to hotels in a seven hour day and actually enjoy yeah. the evening, make some videos, connect, do some fun things and explore. And because yet again, it's a unique time where nothing, we're, we're kind of, there is no Nothing's schedule right yeah. now. Like if, if we, we can go for a week, a month, and we can do whatever we want um, at the moment. So I just love the rogueness of it that yeah. we can kind of. We've never done anything like that really, like this rogue, because we've always had stuff that's kind of kept us back here. So it's the yeah. first time we're kind of venturing out where we're like, let's just see what happens. Or having a time limit. There are so many times yeah. we've spent probably like, five grand over the years on change fees of flights mm. because I'm like, oh, Sunday at two sounds great. And then three months go by and then you're at this location. You're like, oh, I want to stay an extra two days or I want to come home early or I want right. to, you know, and then you have to, to do all that. So for this, having the car and even the car, we've, we never drove it because you got to think about this. We got that car. I worked on days only till Thanksgiving. Yeah. And we go to the grocery store, which is two miles away now we get it delivered our, my, our car has no miles on it so um we yeah we broke down i loved it It was my favorite thing for two days i i went through all the numbers i was so excited i googled <laughs> what's the gas tank that i have what's the average uh gas price in america what's it going to cost how many times do we fill up what's that going to be what are the hotels so the, the, i put everything is, these down these are our paper. conversations at eleven thirty p.m at night <laughs> you come in with numbers Oh, uh, you're always computing. Always it's a puzzle. I love it. And like I see it. Like the first route is seven hours and twenty five minutes, then it's six hours and it's six hours and thirty three minutes, then it's eight hours and thirty four minutes, then it's nine hours and thirty minutes. Like I know it. You numbers are just so numbers. beautiful. It's like a painting. So every number that I hear, I just That's I how love I feel it. About words and, sentences. and I mix it all together Lovely. and Yeah, you're the you're the I'm glad though, because all the copyright, like I wouldn't want to write emails to hotels or brands or all the work that you mm, do for the business. Or vice versa. All the editing, all the numbers, the back office yeah, you, work. you do that, baby. <laughs> I'll do this. It's a good balance. <laughs> it is, though. We got really lucky. That kind of just happened by chance. Yeah. I think we just kind of gravitated toward what we liked and uh -huh. then perfected that. That's true. So, you know. But it's also crazy to me that you at, what was it, 18 or 17 decided, oh, I'm going to learn how to edit. And you bought um what's the program final cut pro final cut pro at that age you're like let's just see like that was something you were destined to do that you had an interest toward i never yeah. started learning to edit until you and even though i can do it i do not care for it it's probably like my least favorite thing to do it stresses me out Ed editing is actually kind of an underrated um art and talent mm -hmm. because you're you're almost not looking for the editing because yeah. when you're a storyteller, you're looking at the, the talent, you're looking at, like even people who do lighting mm -hmm. is overlooked. You know, it's it, even the editing. But the editing, especially, you can take, this is why reality shows are so yep. drama filled, is you can, and, and that, they might manipulate it. I don't mean manipulation. But even if we were to do a vlog of you and I going to Tucson, Arizona, and a, did a 10 minute video, if someone else shot that and edited that, it would be a different story mm -hmm. than if we shot it and edited it yeah. because the editing is what tells the story more than even what we're saying because we might be talking in the car and I'm like, this is going to be really great for the vlog. But when we had Brian, who we hired to, to yeah. film all those, he did a wonderful job, but it was always different than what I would have imagined because he was telling the story and we were the talent where Same. when we do our own vlogs, in my mind, I'm like, this will look good. I'm going to edit this. We need a picture of this sign. Oh, this is going to be funny. I'll bring this back later because I'm talking about this. Then we'll do this later. Yep. Where if you're not doing it together, then the camera person's doing the storytelling and you're the talent. Right. And all of our vlogs turned out amazing. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I would much rather do that. But since we don't hire people anymore to do that, the editing is what's the storytelling. So I don't know if as much as I always said, I can't wait to hire a team one day when we get this bigger. Um, I don't think I'm going to have people – I'm not going to outsource the editing even though it's time-consuming because – It's your thing. It, it's part of 
our narrative. The creation, yeah. Um, but the podcast, I would because it's just cut Back to you talking, forth. cut to me talking. We can outsource that. But as any- long as we don't say anything naughty and they keep it in. Well, we get we never say anything naughty. <laughs> yeah. Or do we? <laughs> beep. beep, beep, beep. No, I'm glad we we uh, we started off this podcast where we were kind of swearing a little bit because that is us, you know. We 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 swear in real life, but when we From started creating a show, we eventually evolved into keeping it PG. Yeah. And anytime something does come out, we'll just beep it, and I just like it. It's yeah. better. Feels good. It's more friendly for everybody, mm-hmm. and. Um, and it just, you know, there's no need really, the more you think about it. You know, I remember being really young and I had this teacher who said, she's like, there's no need to curse because when you curse, it's just simply because you cannot come up with a more intelligent word. And I was like, huh. Now, trust me, when I stub my toe, I'm not thinking about being intelligent. <laughs> beep, beep. But I don't know, it just always stuck with me. And ever since I heard that, I was like, huh. I think I think in the way that they're saying it is that if you're just if you're struggling for a word of like oh yeah like you know I was wearing my my friggin mask and you know like adding it there sure. is pointless sure. but allowing someone to know the actual emotion that you're saying it can work sure. like there are times even when I'm acting that on days we can't swear yeah but oh my god if I could add an f word in there oof, oof. Like when you're looking at someone saying you're a piece of garbage, <laughs> your your brain your so brain unaffected. almost goes into like really oh come at me bro oh piece you're of cheating garbage. on me with him well you're a jerk <laughs> my favorite okay mouth breather that's <laughs> one of my favorites it's just not as um you're just not affected by it. Well, words are attached to emotions sure. in, a, in an interesting way. And um, what, I don't understand the leaf blowing days. Like what time Today's is it? Today's a would Tuesday. You say? I thought it was like always Thursday. 2.33? Yeah. I mean, we have a very clean alleyway. We do. I'm very grateful we for do. that. But it seems like. Uh, Thank you, Universe, for a clean alleyway. Yeah, for a clean alleyway. But the, but the, you know, the podcast studio here, we hear the. Uh, the and leaf blowers. this is why we're going to Florida, huh? There'll be leaf blowers <laughs> and alligators. <laughs> oh, God. We had to look up if there were coyotes in Florida because we're going to have space for Benji to run around, but we're afraid that a coyote will come and well, snatch him at night. Well, I told you that they aren't they weren't they didn't come from there, but apparently over the years they've migrated a little bit. So, they're not as common obviously as out here. I mean, we can literally go outside of our house and walk the dog and there are coyotes a couple streets over. I see on the next door app all the time. They're like, "They're big. They're hanging out in the lawns now." I'm like, "I think oh. they're really clever, too." Yeah. The coyotes don't mess yeah. around. If they want something, they'll get like in backyards. I think a lot of even the Hollywood Hills peeps, oh, like people in the hills, me. that they're that they're little chickens or their um, their their pets, their cats, their dogs are getting picked off by coyotes. I'll never forget in like early two thousands, Jessica Simpson. She had her house in Calabasas, and her doggy was outside, and a coyote caught him. Just like outside in her yeah. backyard? Yeah. And that's why I've always been like, ever since I heard that story, it just terrified me to let him out of my sight. Because even on this app next door that I hear about, they'll say, oh my gosh, be careful because my dog, I had him on a leash and the coyote still approached us. Like they're getting really aggressive. So it just stresses me out. Well, I even heard they're getting more aggressive, some of these animals, because what kept them away from the city and house was how hustle and bustle things were because everything's been shut down. They feel a little more like many cars here anymore i'm gonna venture out a little closer a little closer but did you see when um we had the true quarantine when it first started a lot of different animals were starting to come out and there are all these crazy shots of yeah just really outrageous animals you would never expect because they're like oh we can walk here now yeah (laughs) i'm coming out (laughs) what makes you realize that they just don't want anything to do with us yeah they stay away because they're like never mind that and they stay away from it. But, yeah, we'll keep an eye on him and, and make oh, sure. But I want him to have some okay. freedom. Yeah. He's got to make sure that if, if the backyard is fenced in, if, if coyotes There's... can – like, did Jessica Simpson have a hole in her fence? Did they really jump six feet over a fence? I think she lived in the mountains where coyotes are jumping around, and they just jumped into her yard. 
So it was an easement. So if we actually, we'll look at the house, but I think it's, it's flat. It's flat land in Florida. Well, and then there's a wall around. It's a it. huge, huge wall. It's gonna be. We'll be fine. Yeah. But I'm just saying, like the coyotes would be up here in the mountains, and then like her pool area is here. Oh, and they jump and over just going, it. Hmm, here we go. That's what always scared me about Calabasas. I had a friend whose parents lived up there, and anytime I bring Benji, I was like, I'm not leaving him outside. Because it's just, you just don't know. Yeah. Well, we'll keep them safe. We're gonna keep them. Uh, <laughs> we're gonna keep them nice and safe, and it'll be, it'll be great. Um, but we've um, we've been watching a little bit of a, a of TV lately. We have. Have you enjoyed the That's marriage a- at first sight? Okay, we're on what episode four. Four or five, yeah. Because I fell asleep during the first one, which is where all of these different singles come together, and what there's a matchmaker who asks a ton of questions, and then based off of their answers they will put them together but the whole kicker is that they get married love at first sight so it's the first time they see each other they're getting married and i'm loving it and i think the couples are really just hitting it off like i truly feel like matchmaking is like legit well it shows you how much the personality and commonality between human beings are important Mm-hmm. A lot of the shows about love, it's always it's always based on looks. Just like Tinder. Mm-hmm. Tinder's based on looks, which you do at a bar, you're out and about you're like, "Ooh, that person's sure. attractive." But that is that's temporary in the sense of you're well, going to always find them attractive, but you have to spark. have the, yeah. the internal morals, ethics, goals and things that can mesh. And those matchmakers, I was surprised. I'm like, "Wow." They just fit perfect because they're like, they like kids. They work with kids. They have this. They like, and they, they match them together. But that just shows you in this series how important compatibility is on a yeah. personality level yep. more than the exterior of how you feel about the individual. But I think, and we've always talked about this too, that's why it's so important to have that friendship first. And why I'm so grateful that we have that bond and the friendship that's built because that's what's going to keep you together. All those years, you're going to want someone who, like the couple who loves helping kids, you know, they both work at nonprofits. That's such a huge thing in their life that can keep them together and they can work on their project just like we work on our podcast. You know, yeah. like there are different things that you can do um, when you have common interests instead of just a physical attraction that eventually you're like, okay, well, this is fun, but we don't get along. And so then once the spark yeah diminishes like what are you gonna do Just yeah argue all the time that's what happens that's what you see yeah you gotta find something you have in common that you can bond over mm-hmm. whether it's you're both movie buffs or you both love basketball or you both are in nonprofits, or you do a yeah. podcast or you take cooking classes or whatever it is i think there, there's something that you can always common bond interest. over yeah. so but that's been really good and then i also binged um the last dance Michael Jordan. Yes. I watched like the last four with you maybe. Yeah. How good was that? You know, it, it almost, it's so good that it almost, um, his life in general, it almost gives you the reason or like a bigger purpose in life. Because you know how everyone's looking for the purpose of life. Sure. But when you watch somebody who has maxed out their human potential it gives you a feeling inside, like on, on when you're watching X Factor, American Idol, when someone nails an audition and they get a standing ovation, you get riddled with emotion because you're watching someone achieve greatness. You're mm-hmm. watching someone overcome fear. Mm-hmm. You're watching somebody's, all their preparation lead to this paying off yes. in that moment. And to watch Michael Jordan be one of the greatest, if not the greatest basketball player of all time, seeing his work ethic it just inspired me to want to be better because we can all be Michael Jordan in whatever field we are in life. You can be the Michael Jordan of being a parent, the Michael Jordan of being an accountant, a Michael Jordan of a doctor, and Michael Jordan of podcasting, a Michael Jordan of yeah. whatever. And it just inspired me to want to keep working hard. And it, he reinforced sacrifice hmm. that you have to put everything on the back burner and focus if you're trying to achieve something at that kind of level. Yeah. If you want a work-life balance and you're happy with that, then you're able to have a little more fun, 
So it just made me realize that you have to sacrifice if you want to be in the 1% of yeah. greatness. And and I don't even think you need to sacrifice much. I think it's just how can you just be a little better each day yourself? Don't look at Michael Jordan as a standard. You know, we're crazy. So we, I like looking – I like dreaming that big. <laughs> but – I think anyone, no matter what your dreams are, I think focusing on how can I just be a little better today? Because over 20 years, getting a little better every day. It's going to add up. Holy cow. I mean, even think about like our first podcast, how far we've come. Yeah. You know, and we're going to look back when we're on episode 500 and be like, oh. Oh, right now? <laughs> yeah. we're like, we thought we had it. <laughs> You're so cute. <laughs> I think we've got it. Yeah. You just got to just be authentic. Of course. If you don't have any motive, you just have just just be real and it, and people can feel that. Yeah. And I think too we at the beginning we were kind of looking like how do we how do we make it good? Mhm. Even though we did make it good, it was kind of like we were being good actors rather than being just like in the moment. Yes. So now I, I just like just whatever comes to just mind, talking. whatever just talk t- take people on the journey with you and just talk through things because that's what people do. You sit with a friend and you talk things through. And I think something very interesting about us podcasting is that we're, we've are we always been very inquisitive people. What's that noise? Hmm. We've always been very inquisitive people, so we're curious. We want to learn, whether that's from a person, whether that's from each other. And I think that's what keeps interesting dialogue is wanting to learn because whoever's listening – you go on that journey with them. Even with Joe Rogan, whenever I'm hearing the audio when you're watching him, I'm like, wow. And I, I always learn something. I'm, I'm taken on that journey. So I think just being curious in general in life, mm-hmm. you can sit with anyone and learn something. One of my favorite chapters, or not chapters, but sub-chapters in our book that we wrote two years ago was one of my favorite lines ever is, be nice, ask questions. Yep. It's such a motto to live by. Just be nice. And ask questions because yep. asking questions also shows that you're curious, that you are willing to learn. If you ask a lot of questions, it shows that your ego's in check and that you're a humble person. You don't you don't know everything. Yep. Be nice and ask questions. And life, that's kind of how we live. Yeah. Be nice and just ask questions. Learn. <laughs> what can we learn today? Always. How, how does this work? Well, let's look. How, how do you do this? What route do we take if we're going to road trip? What would that cost? <laughs> I mean, we've always loved to problem solve. And if you can problem solve, you really can do anything. Google. I mean, that is my best friend. Anytime I do not know how to do something, I'm just like, let's Google. Literally yeah. everything you want in the world is on Google. It's the best. It's the greatest tool in the world. So asking questions, problem solving, and just trying to Resourcefulness. learn. Resourcefulness. Resourcefulness, yep. Yeah, that's the one of the greatest. That's what I'd look for in an employee, a what, problem solver yeah. and someone who's resourceful. Yep, and kind, obviously, right? Trustworthy, but those, those but the are problem really important. solving and resourcefulness. Not well, what do I do? I'm like figure it out. Yep, like we no one taught us anything. I'm not kidding you though. I really learned that with my boss, the travel agent, because she would always she'd always tell me just figure it out, do what you have to do, and I was just like, well, shoot, here we go. And you learn early on and you look back at those experiences and go, huh, that made me how I am today because at the, like, what was it, 20 years old? I'm like, oh, gosh, how do I do this? I'm so, and, you know, I figured it out. She didn't have time to deal with it. It was kind of nice to be around someone who was that successful because you, you got to see the, 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 the habits and behaviors yeah. and how to just never take no for an answer, get what you want, and... Being around somebody so who much from her mm-hmm. for years, seeing that, hearing how she was on calls and emails and just really figuring things out and making it happen, I was like, okay, noted. Yeah. So grateful for that experience. You know, it's a, it a great, great experience, but I learned a lot. Well, it was kind of crazy because didn't she at one point she like kind of hinted that if you wanted to take over her business that she was going to train you? She actually paid me and I started training and the only issue was kind of like the work environment there was a lot going on there that I didn't love and I was just like is it worth it to me to sit here and because I ended up quitting after that yeah you know um well her it was her new boyfriend yeah it was just like a lot and I just you know and then 
there's just so much that went into it. But at the end of the day, I was just like, you know, it just wasn't worth it for me. And I look back now and it's like, who knows? Who knows what, I mean. Well, I mean, because she was high end. So I feel travel agent travel agents are probably going to be relevant for ev- not ever but with high end high travel end clients, because I mean, big you're time. almost hiring a travel agent not because you can't go on hotels.com or Expedia but because you don't as a wealthy or whatever kind of person at that high level doesn't want to spend the time researching they just want to say I want to go here this like, is what I want to spend she literally planned multimillionaires trips 2 years in advance for Christmas you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like the big stuff. And she had all the relationships with the hotels and, you know, everything they could imagine making their itinerary. So I don't think that's – I mean, obviously right now people probably aren't traveling. It's probably an industry <laughs> yeah. that got smashed. Ugh, gosh. I mean, everything did. You know, I, there's – there's. I'm just starting to hear like really crazy stories from friends and family about, you know, how different industries – like it's just now – it's been affected – yeah. But now it's really starting to just disrupt everything. I don't know if this is right. I wish I should Google this, but I don't know how long it would take me to find it. But I think there was a chart that came out that 15,000 restaurants in America have shut down permanently. Really? And then um, there was even another stat that 42% of all jobs lost will probably never come back. So that would be there's 40 million unemployed. So if. You're looking at maybe like a 10, you know, once things get a little better, there'll be 10% unemployment, which is still a ton. Now, do you feel like those jobs aren't going to come back because obviously A, the climate of everything that's happening, but B, like AI taking over these jobs, the jobs just aren't going to be needed because people aren't going to be doing that sort of... It's all of it. But then I also heard there's been a lot of jobs created because Mm. now there's things being done differently. So was there a company that put in plexiglass in every single unit was there a company making that much plexiglass was i mean we like masks i I mean there's Mm -hmm. there's so there's a lot of jobs being being created as well but if you think about if that if that number is true i could be way off so i'm I'm, i don't know why i thought that but hypothetically if it is fifteen thousand restaurants there's definitely been many um how many people are at restaurants if you think about how many cooks there are, how many hosts, how many bussers, how many servers, how many managers, so all of those. Um, do you hear him? Is that snoring? Is he snoring? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. The um, sun is sleeping. On they the have, chair. Um, but the, you know, and then all the retail stores. Like, how many people are going to Macy's? Like, who's That's waking done. up and can't wait to go to Express That's... and the food courts and the malls? So, if you think about all the malls, and then all of the airport workers, our, our buddy Scott. On Instagram was, uh, or on Instagram, I saw he was at an airport and he was like, look how empty this is. The whole place was empty. So all the workers, all the arenas, the baseball games are back. The basketball games are back. But no fans. Thousands. Yeah. Gone. Yeah. Parking attendants. Gone. So those are, the, those are the 20 million jobs that are in serious, yeah. even the hotels. Like when we start looking for these hotels... You know, I really want to make sure that they're that they're clean and that. But I, I really believe a brand of a hotel that we recognize, a big brand, is not going to mess around. Because I've even seen some of the no touching and then your cell phone, using your cell phone to get into, you don't have to use key cards or anything. Yeah, and they're using UV light now at a lot of the big um, hotels. It's the new protocol of what kills all of these germs really quickly. So you'd think a bigger brand hotel chain would have more to lose so they're like okay we have to really be on this but you just gotta be careful wash I'm your just, hands i just want to ask for a lower floor where i usually would get a higher hmm. i just don't want to be on an elevator for 37 floors and then have to stop at seven floors and then everyone packs <laughs> in the elevator i'd be like get out <laughs> do you know what i just remembered because <laughs> what i just envisioned i'm like oh cool so we could just go like to floor two and take one flight of stairs if that were the um, situation, and then I was thinking of you in my head, pulling a suitcase upstairs. But it made me think of that time at, at the, the airport. airport. And you were going up the stairs with your your suitcase, just tugging it, and then it completely broke, and your clothes went everywhere. There was only one shirt that was completely <laughs> ruined. All the others were salvaged, but the one shirt was ruined. Where were we? The it was white, a white shirt. A white button down for a white. white party or a white it was a white party that we were going to but everything else made it 
it was just that was the only way so that got ripped to shreds that and dirt and i was so like so funny and i'll just never forget and then you had to like carry it inside and you had to duct tape it all up because we were flying there i think it was like st louis or something yeah and we were doing one of those like ditty parties where everyone dresses in white so like early 2000s but i still love that oh my gosh hysterical yeah so we'll we'll see but we'll we'll, we'll see the um how the hotels are but you know my heart just goes out to everybody who's who's just getting I know. getting smashed I know. and then there's a lot of people too going back who are school teachers who are you know some are hey let's do it but there's a lot of people who are nervous about it of course. they don't you know they're like i'm being around all these kids and like i have my family and so you know we we, we all got to stick together and stay positive because what else can yeah. you do but there's you know there's a lot going on there's a lot going on and I, I really think this is this is such a time, and more people were talking about this the first two weeks, and then no one's talked about this, mm-hmm. which I understand because we kind of went through that. This is such a time to kind of pause your life and kind of reevaluate what you want, where you want to be, and all that. Definitely. Because everyone kind of gets a pass that you can make a huge life change right now, and no matter how you normally would have felt about it, it goes away because of what's going on in the world. Right. So if somebody moved out here and wanted to be an actor, they were here for four years. They were getting close, but nothing happened. And they were kind of contemplating, maybe I should just move home or maybe I should do this. But then you feel like crap because mm-hmm. you feel like you're giving up. Right. That goes away. If you're like, look, I tried it. This wasn't for me. I'm going to go back home. It's a different feeling because the industry's basically still shut down. Yeah. And like, there's all those little things in many mm. industries or in people's lives or in relationships or with work or you're kind of just yeah. like, now's the time. If you're ever going to pivot, do it. Yeah. Figure it out. If you're unhappy, pivot. If you don't like your relationship, your job, or if you, your job's gone and it's one of those jobs, you know, unfortunately isn't coming back, like figure out, well, what is it that I do like or that would be an easier way for me to make money? Yeah, you know? and when you're forced, you know, that's one of my favorite sayings is, um, and I forget the, yet again the, the quote to this, but there was some sort of captain or general or I forget who it was, but they, he showed up to this beach with his soldiers and they were outnumbered, but he burned the ships so that the, they couldn't retreat because if you knew you could always go back to the boat, you wouldn't fight as hard. If you know your back's against the wall and if you don't fight and win, you can't do anything. And I kind of went through that journey too where like even with Days was such a huge part of my life for nine years. Then you kind of go through this thing where you're like, well, what's life without it? And then months go by and then you're kind of like, okay, well now I got to start figuring out what we're going to do. But then you kind of get this enlightenment of like, oh, this is new. This moment almost feels like what it felt like when I first booked it. Right. You're just like, oh, this is new. It's like when I first moved here. Yeah. There, it's it's a new thing yep. that before you never would even go here because it was much more comfortable just to stay in the grind right. because it's just easy. Yeah. You're just churning it out. But then when you're forced to go, okay, well, we got to make a move here. What are we going to do? And we've t- you know really taken our time and we're continuing to take our time. But... It just opens your eyes to go, well, what do you want? What's life about? You know, when everything shuts down, what's what's important? Hmm. Like, what are we doing? Yeah. Why are we all in traffic? Why are we, why was everyone yelling? Yeah. Like, what's all the yelling about? No need to yell, guys. I don't know. It just seems to me that things are just much, they can all be much simpler. You know, it's just like, like condensed. Like, I think we got a little much. Mm-hmm. You know, everything was just like, everything right. was just so much. And now it kind of brought it down, or even for us, like, yeah, we've been a little secluded, but you realize you don't need this or that or this or that. Or we don't need to go to these places. Yeah. I feel the same. Yeah, I'd like to go here and there, but you kind of just adjust. I think everyone feels that, though, more than ever now. We're all just kind of like, okay, oh, I can live life not going to this place, or oh, I can stay in, or I can spend more time doing whatever it is. Yeah. We're all kind of getting situated like this is the new normal. And I'm just, I'm curious to see as everyone is, how it'll all play out. I mean, you what know. What a loaded question. Well, it's it's, it's also loaded because it's, it's almost unfortunately um, tied to politics. Yeah. So it's, 
No, that's why we – and also it's kind of a downer. So yeah. we, we haven't really touched on the, the pandemic much on the podcast because I think yeah. everyone gets that news yeah. 24-7 everywhere yeah. else, and this is kind of more of an escape. But, I mean, we, we're very – you know, we educate ourselves on our thoughts on it. But it's also – we don't like to mention it because – and when you share topics about unemployment or when or you talk about reopening or closing or all of this stuff, it's it's linked to uh, politics and then we don't want to be a political show. Right. We like to keep it just neutral and friendly so people can just enjoy no matter what your beliefs are, no matter what side you're on, no matter if you care or don't care about politics. We like to keep <laughs> it neutral. Um, you know, and so that's kind of how it is. So we don't really touch on that much. But, but that being said, are you hangry? I'm not hangry. Because I'm hangry. You're angry? I'm, I'm you're, almo- you're getting I'm, mad? I'm almost getting mad. I'm so hangry. Well, I'm going to grill us up some ground turkey. Oh, that makes me even more angry. But you know what? <laughs> we'll put a little cheese on it. A little cheese. And a side of steamed broccoli. What do you say? Oh, Lord. It'll be good. Hey. It'll be good. Then I'll have leftovers later. But we'll okay. email. But yeah, we, uh, we, we will keep you up to date once we book our cities. Yes. And we'll let you know. Um, it's going to be a fun adventure, so make sure you guys are subscribed because we're going to have all sorts of content here on YouTube. Oh, yeah. Lots of videos. We're going to take you guys along for what I can only imagine is going to be a cray-cray time. Yeah. Oh, never. And if there were moment. different times, we because we're going to go to so many states, we probably would have done some sort of meet and greet real quick to I say know. hi, but we're going to... Stay away from human beings. No, for so, now. For now. Gotta be safe. But um, just know, everyone, we, we, we are really thinking about once things open up, um, you know, we have to do something to meet you in person. You know, some of you we've been fortunate enough to meet. Those of you we haven't. Um, we're gonna we're gonna do something like mm-hmm. really cool, and it's just not the time to think about it because we don't know how long we're all gonna be. You know, not able to get in groups, but. But we, we got to give you all a hug. Time. I know. Yeah. We, we love time. you all so much. So thanks for hanging Super with grateful. us and kicking with us today. And then we'll be back here on Friday. And then uh, Wednesday and Friday, Wednesday, Friday, Wednesday, Friday. <laughs> Loves it. Love right. you guys. Bye. Take care, everyone. <laughs>